been to the mountaintop by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. April 3rd, 1968, Mason Temple, Memphis, Tennessee. Something is happening in Memphis. Something is happening in our world. And you know, if I were standing at the beginning of time, with the possibility of taking a kind of general and panoramic view of the whole of human history up to now, and the Almighty said to me, Martin Luther King, which age would you like to live in? I would take my mental flight by Egypt, and I would watch God's children in their magnificent trek from the dark dungeons of Egypt through, or rather across the Red Sea, through the wilderness, on toward the promised land. Strangely enough, I would turn to the Almighty and say, If you allow me to live just a few years in the second half of the twentieth century, I will be happy. Something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up, and wherever they are assembled today, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, Accra, Ghana, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, the cry is always the same. We want to be free! And another reason that I'm happy to live in this period is that we have been forced to a point where we are going to have to grapple with the problems that men have been trying to grapple with through history, but the demands didn't force them to do it. Survival demands that we grapple with them. Men, for years now, have been talking about war and peace, but now, no longer can they just talk about it. It is no longer a choice between violence and non-violence in this world. It's non-violence or non-existence. That is where we are today. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And He's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. And so I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The Black Family Pledge by Maya Angelou because we have forgotten our ancestors, our children no longer give us honor. Because we have lost the path our ancestors clear, kneeling in perilous undergrowth, our children cannot find their way. Because we have banished the God of our ancestors, our children cannot pray. Because the long Wails of our ancestors have faded beyond our hearing. Our children cannot hear us crying. Because we have abandoned our wisdom of mothering and fathering, our befuddled children give birth to children they neither want nor understand. Because we have forgotten how to love the adversary is within our gates 
and hold us up to the mirror of the world shouting, regard the loveless. Therefore, we pledge to bind ourselves again to one another, to embrace our lowliest, to keep company with our loneliest, to educate our illiterate, to feed our starving, to clothe our ragged, to do all good things, knowing that we are more than keepers of our brothers and sisters. We are our brothers and sisters in honor of those who toiled and implored God with golden tongues and in gratitude to the same God who brought us out of hopeless desolation, we make this pledge. Ego Tripping, There May Be a Reason Why by Nikki Giovanni. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the fertile crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only grows every 100 years falls into the center, giving divine, perfect light. I am bad. I sat on the throne drinking nectar with Allah. I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my thirst. My oldest daughter is Nefertiti. The tears from my birth pains created the Nile. I am a beautiful woman. I gazed on the forest and burned out the Sahara Desert with a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes. I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle, so swift, so swift, you can't catch me. For a birthday present, when he was three, I gave my son Hannibal an elephant. He gave me Rome for Mother's Day. My strength flows ever on. My son Noah built New Ark and I stood proudly at the helm as we sailed on a soft summer day. I turned myself into myself and was Jesus. Men intoned my loving name, all praises, all praises. I am the one who would save. I sold diamonds in my backyard. My bowels deliver uranium, the filings from my fingernails are some my precious jewels. On a trip north, I caught a cold and blew my nose giving oil to the Arab world. I am so hip, even my errors are correct. I sailed west to reach east and had to round off the earth as I went. The hair from my head thinned and gold was laid across three continents. I am so perfect, so divine, so ethereal, so surreal. I cannot be comprehended except by my permission. I mean, I can fly like a bird in the sky. <laughs> History slash time, Destiny Whitaker. History slash time, the soil never settles, the gravel won't cease to be. The grains of sand are losing to time, time wins back on we. The dirt stains my fingernails, I begin to heave. I skip through the meadows, we hang from the trees. They said a change was coming, but only inflation stands. Maybe one day soon, that damn railroad will run again. Alternate Names for Black Boys by Danez Smith. 
one. Smoke above the burning bush. Two, arch nemesis of summer night. Three, first son of soil. Four, coal awaiting spark and wind. Five, guilty until proven dead. Six, oil heavy starlight. Seven, monster until proven ghost. Eight, gone. Nine, phoenix who forgets to an ash. Ten, going, going, gone. Eleven, gods of shovels and black veils. Twelve, what once passed for kindling. Thirteen, fireworks at dawn. Fourteen, brilliant shadow-hued coral. Fifteen, I thought to leave this blank, but who am I to aim to name us nothing? Sixteen, prayer who learned to bite and sprint. Seventeen, a mother's joy and clutched breath. Sorrow Home by Margaret Walker. My roots are deep in Southern life, deeper than John Brown or Nat Turner or Robert Lee. I was sired and weaned in a tropic world. The palm tree and banana leaf, mango and coconut, breadfruit and rubber trees know me. Warm skies and gulf blue streams are in my blood. I belong with the smell of fresh pine, with the trail of coon and the spring growth of wild onions. I am no hothouse bulb to be reared in steam-heated flats with the music of L and Subway in my ears, walled in by steel and wood and brick far from the sky. I want the cotton fields, tobacco and the cane. I want to walk along with sacks of seed to drop in fallow ground. Restless music is in my heart and I am eager to be gone. Oh, Southland, sorrow home, melody beating in my bone and blood. How long will the clan of hate, the hounds and the chain gangs keep me from my own? On being brought from Africa to America by Phyllis Wheatley. Twas mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a savior too. Once I, redemption neither sought nor knew. Some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolic dye. Remember Christians? Negroes, black as cane, may be refined and join the angelic train.
Hello, I am Maria Esmeralda, and I am performing to you the poem by the analysis of the poet called Dream Fade. So everyone was on a rainbow high, caught up in a swirl of all the colors that were to unfurl evenly, dreamily, promising you and me that society would be as it should be, that we could all be together on life's playground and that everyone would play real nice. Thing is, we got played real nice. Let ourselves get caught napping so heavily that the dream got blurred and the wisdom of the dream weaver got obscured and in our grogginess we miss how much our dreams been abjured. Our king decreed that we should be vigilant and heed his warning sent from the court of Birmingham jail and squad and why we can't wait. But it seems we've waited things out long enough to let the enemies at the gate attack our royal sage, assuaging us by promoting him to demigod and thus demoting him and his prophetic power. We nod, dozing, as a still hateful world has us join hands and say, I have a dream, while ignoring the edgier incisiveness of the dreamer. You see, their scheme was brilliant. Have us happy for a holiday and placate us with a few morsels of rights. While right in front of our eyes, they continue to feast on elaborate systematic racism and extravagant economic exploitation, discarding justice as waste for disposal. Washed away with a watered down view of Martin, a sad reality in a supposed dream world. Reality is, you don't hear them holler in support of our support of black dollars. With stealth, they suppress the wealth ML wanted us to build, undercutting our understanding of Ujama in his under urgent calls for unified action. You don't hear abundant accolade for his address of April 4, 67, a year to the day before a bullet sent him to heaven. for denouncing the hell our country raised in Southeast Asia. They'd rather keep us dreaming in Fantasia than for us to wake up knowing that it's time to break the silence. Public perception is stuck on the steps of the memorial, memorialized, i.e. dead, or so it seems. Thus, I have a dream deferred. Not that I'm not proud of that spectacular speech in front of that crowd. Indeed, it's good to see the props our leader and elder so deservedly receives. However, we're deceived. If we think his fuller message of equality is fully believed, or if such is even close to having been achieved. So be careful of hollow pasanas and loosely thrown laudation. Not everyone who says of him, Lord, Lord, wants to enter the kingdom. Still, for a few days every middle of January, we get inundated with effusive exaltation and empty exclamations about keeping the dream alive from a society that continues to kill it, keeping itself exempt in the responsibility to fulfill it, while those non-exempt from being the other work hard with no privileged status. While the privileged defy the drum major for justice, they keep folk dragging their feet to the drone of a conformist beat that drums into our heads a dumbed down version of the radical strive toward freedom he led us on. Of course, we do have MLK boulevards across the urban landscape, some in areas that would make the honorary cringe at the dishonorable conditions he sought to eradicate. He would hate the under-resourcing of schools bearing his name. Elementary inequities in line items and allotments help establish a secondary education so exigious of equal footing that the erudite ecclesiastical 
with a due association with the FNFS engravings on the edifices. Yet when the celebrations have ceased and we declare our continued concerns about our continued confinement to a lower class, we are condescendingly told, Oh, that was cute. Now run along and play. We have more important things to do like control the wealth and build our empire. Why don't you go build a campfire? And saying, come by now, my lord, just don't come by here. My lord, I wonder when we'll be free at last, free at last, from falling for the false reverence this country offers the reverend, as those felons feign to affirm the transformation of society he fought for, fronted just far enough to finagle our favor and force their fingers into our fortune, Unfortunately, the chaos of, in our country accommodates this fraud as we fail to focus on where we go from here. He said, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. Seems we've settled on promises, promises, settling for a promissory note from a nation that promised us a story denoted by justice, but instead wrote more bad checks because we still don't receive enough credit in this union. So here's a reality check. Our dream is the oppressor's nightmare because sharing the power in the purse scares them to death. And so they make sure we stay asleep. Deep in our young state, as they stage peaceful scenes for our matrix, making us think we've made it and that Martin's work is done. Everyone was on a rainbow high, caught up in the swirl of those who have no love for the beloved community love watching it crash low. We better act like we know. The only way the dream will come true is for us to wake up and get real. And somewhere through the haze, a prophet still points the way forward. Maybe we'll get the point and keep moving. Inspired in part by Choke, creating her own kinetic energy. Thank you. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I've walked like I've got oil webs pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders fallen like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. <laughs> You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise! In Another World by Razak Malik. In another world, I want to be a father without passing through the eternal insanity of mourning our children, without 
experiencing the ritual of watching my children return home as bodies folded like a prayer mat without spending my nights telling them the stories of a hometown where natives become aliens searching for a shelter. I want my children to spread a mat outside my house and play without the walls of houses ripped by rifles. I want to watch my children grow to recite the name of their homeland like Lord's Prayer, to frolic in the streets without being hunted like animals in the bush, without being mobbed to death. In another world, I want my children to tame grasshoppers in the field, to play with their dolls in the living room, to inhale the fragrance of flowers waving as wind blows to see the birds measure the sky with their wings. Juanda, Where Tears Have No Powers by Haki R. Madubuti. Who has the moral high ground? 15 blocks from the White House on small corners in Northwest DC, Boys disguised as me rip each other's hearts out with weapons made in China. They fight for territory. Across the planet, in a land where civilization was born, the boys of DC know nothing about their distant relatives in Rwanda. They have never heard of the Hutu or Tutsi people. Their eyes draw blanks at the mention of Kigali, Biumba, or Butare. And all they know are the streets of DC and do not cry at funerals anymore. Numbers and frequency have a way of making murder commonplace and not news, unless it spreads outside of our house block territory. Modern massacres are intra-ethnic. Bosnia, Sri Lanka, Burundi, Nagorno-Karabakh, Iraq, Laos, Angola, Liberia, and Rwanda are small foreign names on a map made in Europe. When bodies by the tens of thousands float down a river, turning the water the color of blood, as a quarter of a million people flee barefoot into Tanzania and Zaire, somehow we notice. We do not smile. We have no more tears. We hold our thoughts in deeply muted silence, looking south and thinking that today, Nelson Mandela seems much larger than he is. Filled with Glee by Tanya J. Heath. Look up, everybody's here. It's a party, a whole world of colors and objects and fun things you adore. Look. There's a wall over there painting the exact same color green you like. There's a television playing old school cartoons that will keep the fussiest 90s teen content. There's a living room that's bohemian and Moroccan chic and a stereo blasting Broadway's best. You, though you have a limited taste and you smile to yourself, I couldn't be happier, right dear? All of your friends are here too. Everyone's wearing funky things. It's a costume party. You look down and gasp. You're wearing that hot, sexy thing you imagined yourself buying last week, but you didn't have the nerve to try on. You have the body you always dreamed of. Your hair is looking tight, girl. All your friends and family are smiling. Everyone's waiting for you to join the party. You smile too, hesitant at first. Then you join the fray. And then you realize as soon as you step into the bubble world filled with delusions of grandeur, everything pops. You're by yourself. You always were. I am a black woman by Mari Evans. 
I am a black woman. The music of my song, some sweet arpeggio of tears is written in a minor key and I can be heard humming in the night, can be heard humming in the night. I saw my mate leap screaming to the sea and I with these hands cup the life breath from my issue in the cane break. I lost Nat's swinging body in a rain of tears and heard my son scream all the way from Anzio for peace he never knew. I learned the Nang and Pork Chop Hill in anguish. Now my nostrils know the gas and these triggered tired fingers seek the softness in my warrior's beard. I am a black woman, tall as a cypress, strong beyond all definition, still defying place and time and circumstance, assailed, impervious, indestructible. Look on me and be renewed. Thank <laughs> you.